So I told you guys this was going to happen and we will be watching the receipts and videos today on this video. So make sure you hit the like button and notification bell. You're reading it correctly. Only it wasn't Michigan. Now it's San Diego State. So Deion Sanders is losing his coach, his assistant coordinator that he demoted. And he is going to get hired by San Diego, uh, San Diego State. Let me fall back and let the video play. And then we'll read some of the things we got to read and touch up on. We're learning some more about the Aztecs new football coach. This has been a highly anticipated hire. A lot of people wondering where the Aztecs would go with this hire. And it appears we know which direction they look like they have their next head football coach. And he will come to San Diego with a dash of prime time. Reports are that San Diego State is set to hire Colorado Buffs offensive coordinator Sean Lewis. Lewis is expected to be introduced as the next head coach tomorrow morning. The 37 year old Lewis spent five seasons at Kent State, taking them to two bowl games and earning the Golden Flashes their first bowl victory in school history. In his time at Kent State, Lewis compiled an overall record of 24 and 31 before signing a three year deal with Deion Sanders and the Buffaloes. With Colorado, Lewis came out of the gates on fire fire as CU and particularly their offense took the college football world by storm. The Buffs scored more than 40 points in four of their first seven games, but Lewis was demoted from play calling duties in early November in favor of former NFL coach Pat Shermer as Colorado's season went into a complete tailspin. Lewis is known for his high flying fast paced offenses that spread the field out in 2020 at Kent. Lewis's offense finished number one nationally in yards per game and points per game scoring almost 50 on average. San Diego State hasn't finished in the top 75 nationally in scoring offense since 2017. Lewis will replace the now retired Brady Hoke. Both Colorado and San Diego State finished the year at four and eight. Marcelo, this should be exciting. It should be a whole different type of offense you see out there at Snapdragon Stadium. I agree. Um, I agree, man. It's going to be an entire new offense over there in San Diego. Um, I'm not a hater, man. I'm going to be honest. Sean Lewis did a, a vast improvement on the Colorado Boulders a team prior to losing the four, first four, even after losing uh, the fourth game or whatever. But the first four games was amazing. It tells me I don't know about him being a head coach because he got fired from Ken. No, he left Kent State, but the record was 50 50. But as a coordinator, the man was desperately needed at Colorado. And salute to Pat Schumer, but I don't know what he could bring to a college-style offense. This isn't the NFL, and even though it's transparent, but you know it's not really the same thing. You have to have a coach who specifically can guise and strategic, uh, strategically make plays, assess, and attest it and acclimate it to the college environment, not really a college-like NFL transition. Not really, bro. So losing Sean Lewis is big in my opinion, but he had to leave because – there's been rumors he was a plant. He was doing things to cause the team to lose. And these are allegations. And being that it's allegations, let me make sure to put what we always put on the screen. We always make sure we say this. Rumors can make you hate innocent people and love the hypocrites. Be wise, meaning that go research and do your due diligence to see if certain things are true or not. But we know with Sean Lewis, uh, he came from Kent State from doing uh, 2018 to 2022. And, you know, he replaces Brady Hoke at the Aztecs, who were also four and eight, much almost like the Colorado Buffaloes team. But I can tell he got hired because he can energize the offense real quick. So they're trying to utilize him as the head coach, really masking him from an offensive coordinator position. That's what he really is, a glorified offensive coordinator. Now, the defensive-minded Hokey failed to develop potent offenses at San Diego. And, you know, it didn't really go good. Then when they got him, they thought, you know, because to me, defense wins everything. But with Hulk, his defense was stagnated. The offense didn't even move anywhere much as well. So it was like, let's just get someone who can score and we'll figure out the defensive part of the, you know, team later, which is why they got Sean Lewis. Now, when you look at uh, Colorado, replacing Sean Lewis with an NFL coach, I guess on paper, it looks real good. But on game tape, we didn't see that much of an improvement. It kind of looked like it hurt the team when Sean Lewis got demoted as far as offense. I'm just being honest with you guys. Now, let's go to a bigger screen right quick. I just want to read some of these follow-ups with y'all. 
And a lot of things they're showing here with Sean Lewis is just more the accolades he did with uh, Buffalo's team. So I don't want to get into that too much or hype it. But I do know and did know he was going to get hired pretty much because of the things going to be favored towards him. When you can change a team such as Colorado, bro, there's no way people was going to hold him back. I mean, being 37 years old, too, and being a young coach like that, it only adds fuel to the fire for his passion and his coaching or whatever. So I don't know if he disguised his intentions in the beginning or Dion knew his aspirations of being a head coach because why would you go to uh, Dion if you didn't want to be a power five coach? You know, I, I, I stand firm on my belief that there was some skeptic things about him, but I'm also going to be non-biased when I say Dion got a lot to put on himself in this situation, meaning that uh, some of the ways he went about his coaching is not really wrong, but the way he, you know, he was adamant on things on, in front of the camera towards some of his peers, i.e. meaning staff, I didn't really like it. Not that Dion was wrong to be mad at his staff, but certain things is... It's for privacy, my personal opinion. Y'all could, y'all in the comment sections can get on me for that, but I just believe, my personal belief on that, certain things are not made for the media and it should be kept in-house. But then again, when you look at Sean Lewis, certain information got out about jobs he was seeking and looking at, and how else would that information get out if it wasn't Sean Lewis speaking to these reporters and journalists. So Dion had to clean house and, and make sure his house was clean because a lot of Benedict Arnold and Judas was hiding amongst the ranks. So it just made an unstable, you know, coaching situation. It was not very comfortable. And when you look at his son, I got to do a report. Dion Sanders Jr. just got in tune with former Florida quarterback Danny Connell who now works at Fox Sports after being removed from ESPN, the failed company known as ESPN. But, um, yeah, man, looking at primetime, he got a lot of headaches and hurdles to jump over. But, you know, I'm with my man. I ain't going to leave. You know, I'm not going to leave Dion. I'm going to root for Colorado. I'm not fake. I only root for Colorado because of Dion, but it built into a different type of passion now. And I believe even if Dion would leave Colorado, I want to see them win. Bro, that's just how I am with sports. I still look at the JSU games. How many of y'all people who are new to JSU could raise your hands if you still follow them? <clears throat> To much obliged, I still follow them heavy, heavy. I love what the new coach is doing over there. He's transformed the team as well. He should get his props as well and his flowers. But Dion doesn't have to only look at improvement from his players and coaching staffs. I really believe Dion is a solid man, so he has to look at improvement within his own self as well. And I'm pretty sure he knows that already. Therefore, he doesn't need to hear it from me, but kind of, you know, Kind of feels uncomfortable a little bit, but, you know, nonetheless, I'll keep you guys updated. I'm not jumping off the bandwagon. I feel like Dion is going to keep rocking. He's going to keep doing his thing the right way, and we'll be here to follow and keep y'all updated. I'm DJ Bless One. Love your family. Love your kids. And stay blessed. Peace.